right, we are looking at lesson 81, complex numbers. Do you remember what a complex number is? It's like two and three over five. Oh, wait, no, it's complex. Yes. The ones with eyes. The ones that have eyes in them. Two plus three I. Well, he is going to a literary rally. He is? Mm -hmm. uh, for algebra two. It's next, it's like a week from tomorrow. I'm guessing we'll get a, I'll give you a sheet to, next week from Miss Hilton about that. All right, so every complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. Your complex numbers, like if you think of having a big area where you put all your complex numbers, you've got imaginary numbers and you have real numbers and a combination of both. That's the form you want to write them in. What is the A? The real part. What is the B? Off? The imaginary. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is called the real part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's called standard form. Your real part always comes first, and your imaginary part always comes at the end. So A plus B, and then B is multiplied by your I. So right now, this first one is not in standard form. It's one fraction. You see that? We want to put just the real part, and then the imaginary part. What would be the real part of this fraction? Four fifths, and then minus three over five. Ah, that's how they want it written, standard form. Does that make sense? Instead of having it as one fraction, since you have an ah here, that's how they want it split into two. What about this one? If you want to do that, you can. But do you ever have to write zero? So you don't have to put the zero. Does that make sense? What about this last one? Four divided by two is just two. And then plus zero i, but do we actually have to put the zero? Don't put just a plus i. Because that's different than just negative two squared to three. So if you want to put plus zero i, you can, or you can just have negative two squared to three. Do you all see how that works? Okay. All right. So, oh, wait. I think I just skipped one. No, I didn't. Okay. All right, so see if you can multiply those correctly.
Mm-hmm. You always want to write your answer in standard form. Someone want to go multiply it on the board? Do you agree that that's how you would multiply it out? And does anything cancel? The A, B, I is cancel. And so we're left with A squared minus B squared, I squared. Mm -hmm. The I squared cancels, and so we're left with A squared plus B squared. Does that make sense? Because I squared is the same thing as negative one. Well, if you wanted to write it with parentheses, you could do it that way. No, we don't have any imaginary parts, so you don't have to. I mean, if you can't, you can if you want to, but they're not usually going to do that. Any other questions? Okay. See if you can try this one. Someone want to go multiply that one out? Okay. Hit, hit, hit right, extend. Hit it again. Do you agree? What are the 4 plus, I mean 3 plus 4i and 3 minus 4i, what are those called? <laughs> conjugates. Do y'all see that those are conjugates? Make sense? Those two are conjugates of each other because they have the same thing basically except for opposite signs in the middle. Yeah, we're going to be dealing with conjugates. Did, did these look kind of familiar instead of I's with square roots? It's almost the exact same thing, except instead of having a square root, we have I's. I think these are actually easier than the square root ones. Do you not like these problems? I, personally, I think these are easier than the ones with square roots, so maybe you'll like them better. Yeah, they do take up a little bit of room. And you can't write small. I mean, you can, but then you can't read what's in your square roots. Yeah. So, yeah, they do take up more room. So, we cannot have an I in our denominator. So, this little I right here, we can't leave our answer with an I. Just like we can't leave our answer with the square root in the denominator. So, what could we do? Do you agree? Do you see how that works? Yeah. 
So what would be in our numerator? Oh, whoa, you simplified too quickly. Eight. <coughs> yeah, you, yeah, you went ahead. Does that make sense? All right, over. Do you see how that works? Any questions so far? Okay, so these cancel. What happens to this term? Yeah, it becomes a negative 6. What happens to this one? Right? So what do we have in our denominator? Okay. So what they want you to do is make it into two separate fractions. So 2 over 20 is what? 1 over 10. And then plus 16 over 20? 4 over 5? Ah. Yeah, you don't have the same denominator because these will only divide by 2 and these will divide by 4. Do what? <coughs> yeah, this whole thing is your answer. Okay. Well, this has an ah. Uh, it doesn't. So you have to leave them separate. Do y'all see how to take it from this one fraction to make it into two? Any questions on that? Okay. Let's look at one more. You think you can do it by yourself? Maybe. Anybody brave enough to go work it out on the board? Okay. You got the answer, but then you didn't know how to write in standard form? Okay. Your sleeve touched it barely. Did you do 2i plus 3? This one. Okay. 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 Okay.
Do you agree with that? Um, no, you just want to put it up with the numerator. Okay, yeah, if you had it, then 16 over 13, negative 16 over 13, and then minus 2 over 13. You just come out with the same thing. I feel like I've got a, it's like I feel it, but I can't see it. Any other questions on changing it into standard form? None? Okay.